Now that's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. There it is, all right. That's where I'm sending you, Indochina. But you're pointing to the island of Bali. Ah, Bali. A paradise on earth. Heavenly climate. Sensationally beautiful women. How about the place you're sending me, Indochina? A steaming jungle crawling with killers. Marauding bands of bandits. You'll have to fill out this application right away for your passport. Okay. I'll need one for Margie, too. Yep. Margie? Are you out of your mind? You can't take her. Why, Indochina's a hotbed of unrest. Anything could happen over there. If I went off and left her alone, anything could happen over here. She might even marry that knothead, Freddie Wilson. For heaven's sakes, if that's all that's worrying you, forbid her to see him while you're gone. About the quickest way to get a modern American girl to do something is to tell her she can't. Well, think of some other way, then. Well, the trouble is, I promised Margie I'd take her on my next trip and... Well, she can't go and that is final. Oh, if I went alone, I'd be so worried about her that I wouldn't be able to do a good job for you. The whole thing is preposterous. The idea of letting your daughter's boyfriend interfere with our business. I won't have it. And if you can't think of some way to get rid of him, I will. I can hear her now. If you don't take me with you, I'll, I'll marry Freddie Wilson. If you don't take me with you, I'll, I'll do something drastic. I know. I'll go up to Bar Harbor and charge a whole suite in the hotel to you. Be sure and take along plenty of sun oil. Oh, listen, Dad. If you don't... All right. I'll marry Freddy. You will not. Stop using that comic strip dialogue on me. Oh, sob. Now cut that out. You're not going with me and you're not marrying anybody either. Isn't America wonderful? A girl gets to be 21 and nobody can stop her if she wants to get married. Now look, honey. You can visit Aunt Carrie in Philadelphia. I'll marry Freddie. No, you won't. Who's going to stop me? Margie, all right, I'm your father. And I'm your daughter. How do you do? <laughs> Cut that out. Oh, oh, excuse me. I thought I heard a storm coming down the elevator shaft. Oh, wait a minute, Roberta. Maybe you can reason with her. Sorry, no time to argue. Civil defense meeting tonight. <laughs> she can't stop the elevator with my hand in the door. <laughs> She bit my finger. Oh, What's it all about this time? Well, she threatened to marry Freddy. Is that all? She threatened to do that dozens of times. Well, but this time it's different. This time I won't be around to keep my eye on her. You'll have to help me. Fern, I'm terribly fond of you and of Margie, too, but I'm the quiet, peaceful type. And I'm not going to get in the midst of any of your family squabbles again. And besides, her bark is much worse than her bite. Hmm. My finger doesn't say so. <laughs> all right. Well, boy, what happened? What else? Margie says she's going to marry the droop. <laughs> good, good. What do you mean, good, good? Relax, all right. I got everything under control. I'm glad you're amused. I told you old Honeywell would think of a way to get rid of that Freddie Wilson for you. Did you ever hear me speak of my niece, Nancy? What's she got to do with Margie and Freddie? Elementary, my boy, elementary. 
Get it? Now, just suppose Margie should walk in and catch Freddie dating my niece. Nancy's been wanting me to finance a dramatic career for her, and this is a good chance for her to show me what she can do. Sounds underhanded to me. It's not underhanded at all. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, well, you're right, it's underhanded. <laughs> All right, you're going to Indochina for me, and you've got to go there with a free mind. I won't have any part of a frame-up. All right. I always enjoy a good wedding, and while you're away, I'll be Margie and Freddie's best man. Okay, you win. <laughs> How do we do it? What kind of an emergency, Mr. Albright? Freddie, did you ever casually meet a girl? Don't even give her a second look. Barely say, how do you do? And bingo, she falls madly in love with you? Never happened to me. Yeah, well, it happened to Mr. Albright, and that's why you're here, my boy. You're going to do him a little favor, okay? Well, gee, anything I can do. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Freddy. Now, listen. Her name is Lily Fontaine. Showgirl. Why, well, she's driving poor Albright crazy. Calling him up at all hours, coming up to the office, but you're going to change all that. Me? How? I've got everything arranged. She's coming over to the apartment tonight to see me. But you'll be there instead. All you have to do is sweep her right off her feet. Yeah, make her forget all about me. But, Mr. Albright, I couldn't do a thing like that. What would Margie say? Well, who's going to tell her? I'll get her out of the apartment tonight, and what she doesn't know won't hurt her. It's all settled, then. Could you give me a couple of pointers? I mean, with an actress like that, I wouldn't even know how to start to make her fall for me. Well, that pair, a nice compliment. That always makes a hit with women. Just a second, please. I better take some notes. Number one, compliments. Uh, could you maybe give me an example? Okay, Freddie. Stand up, Mr. Honeywell. Now, Mr. Honeywell, you're Miss Fontaine. Now, watch this carefully, Freddie. Ah, Miss Fontaine. Such a soft white hand. Like a sea of velvet bathed in a million dazzling reflections of the stars in your eyes. I'll show you that. Could you give me some more ideas? Well, they're love at first sight. I'll show you the silent approach. Now, Mr. Honeywell, you're Miss Fontaine again, only this time you're powdering your nose. <laughs> you see? Completely silent. Not a single word. Would you mind if I tried it? No, no. Go ahead. Gee, thanks. Do you have any more? Oh, I don't think you'll need it, but just in case, I'll give you the subtle approach. Now, Freddy, I'm you. How do you do, Miss Fontaine? Do you like champagne? Oh, I love champagne. Now, this is a subtle part. Do you know how they make champagne from the grapes, Lily? No, Freddy. Tell me, how do they make champagne from grapes? Then you say, they squeeze the grapes, and you demonstrate by squeezing Miss Fontaine. Remember that one. But what if she doesn't go for me at all? I mean, supposing none of these approaches work. In that case, my boy, there's one technique that never fails. The caveman. Caveman? Yeah. Resist me, woman, and I'll break every bone in your body. Boy, Mr. Albright, you know everything. Caveman approach. Hello? Oh, Dad. A little surprise for you, Margie. You're going out tonight. That's right. Leave about 8. Getting home about 10.15. Why? Because I've wangled you a ticket to Monterelli's exclusive preview of their fall fashions. Really? Oh, that's swell, Dad. Thanks. Why? Oh, of course I'll go. Thanks again. Bye. Good evening, Mr. Albright. Oh, good evening, Mrs. O'Dax. Well, you were right, Margie. What did I tell you? I knew he was up to something. But what made you suspicious? I've spent 21 years with my dear father, and when I go to a fashion show, I buy things, and Dad knows it, and he always blows his cork about it. So anytime he goes out all on his own and gets me an invitation to a Monterelli preview, I want to know what's cooking, and I'm going to find out right now. 
All right, Nancy. Now show me how you're going to bring the imaginary Lily Fontaine to life. I'll do my best, Mr. Albright. Now, I get the picture, Mr. Albright. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I'm supposed to bust up your daughter's romance with a character named Freddie Wilson. That's the idea. He'll be here at 10 sharp. Tell him I phoned that I'd been detained. Told you I was sending him over to keep you company. My daughter will be home about 10.15. And when she does, she'll find you and Freddie here. I understand perfectly. <laughs> What's it all about, Margie? What's going on over there? Oh, are they going to be surprised? I can just about make it. Keep your fingers crossed for me. What are you going to do? I'm going to see just how Mr. Freddie Wilson dates when I'm not around. What you are doing now? Just a little fast boomerang for my dear father. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Margie. Roberta, could you do me a little favor? I'm downtown and Dad's working late. At least that's what he told me. And I think I left the oven on, so could you step over and... Oh, thanks a million. Uh, just walk right in. The door's unlocked. Bye now. That ought to fix it. Like it? Oh, that's going to be very nice. Oh. <laughs> Working late, huh? Excuse me just a minute. Roberta! Roberta, please. I know this is going to sound like something you've heard before, but... I don't believe it. You don't believe it? Well, you haven't heard anything yet. I can explain everything. You can turn off your own oven. <laughs> shows up. Come on, I'll show you where to change. It's the first door on the left. Now I'm counting on you. Don't you let Freddy get cold feet. Don't you worry about a thing. You all right? You're not having any trouble with that Albright guy. No, no. That's what I called to tell you. Everything's fine, Rocky. My uncle has some odd friends, but, well, Mr. Albright's very sweet. Okay, but it still sounds pretty screwy to me. Look, baby, I'll be right here. If that guy gets out of line at all, just give me a buzz. Sure, Rocky. Bye now. Said he was sending a friend over to uh, keep me company for a while. I think he said your name was Wilson. 
Freddie Wilson. Yeah, that, that's me. The soft, white Wilson. I, I mean, Freddie. Don't be scared of me, honey boy. Come on in the living room so we can sort of uh, get acquainted. I'll be waiting in here. You'll recognize me. Just look for the blonde on the divan. I'll be wearing a warm heart in my left lapel. Silent approach. <laughs> Come on, honey. Don't be so distant. Champagne grapes. Uh, do, do you like to squeeze champagne? I mean, do you know how they make grapes? Sure, honey, I know how they make grapes. They pump up raisins. Huh? Well, there's nothing on the list about raisins. This. Oh. Oh, well, will you excuse me a minute, please? Hello, Artie. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Boy, you sure must be doing okay with Mr. Albright. You mean Mr. Albright ordered all this, Artie? Yep, supper for two. Why, what a break for you. Having a nice girl like Margie Albright, and a special supper paid for by her father, and, uh... Really, Artie, there's an explanation for all this. I hope you won't say anything to Miss Albright about it. Don't worry, I'll keep my mouth shut. After all, it's human nature. You know, while the cat's away, that's the idea, Artie. What Margie doesn't know won't hurt her. <laughs> Tell me, honey, who's this Margie you were talking about? She's my girlfriend. Very nice, too. But I'm not going to think about her tonight. Uh -huh. Like you said, what Margie doesn't see won't hurt her. That's right. Tonight it's just you and me, Lily. I think this is going to be a very interesting evening. <laughs> In his own girl's apartment. Uh, the, the Lilette seat, huh? Uh, tell me, Lily, do you believe in love at first sight? That's what it must be, Freddy. Love at first sight. From the second I saw you, honey, you've been driving me mad. Mad, I tell you, crazy, crazy mad. Do you hear me, mad? I don't expect you to understand this, Lily, but from here on in, I'm rowing my own boat. Anchors away. Rocky? Rocky, it's just terrible. He locked me in the closet. Oh, hurry, Rocky, hurry. Take it easy, boy. Down, boy. Down. Let's eat. Okay, honey, but let's make it fast. You answer the door. I'll answer the phone. I'll be right back. Hello. Oh, Mr. Albright. Marge, you arrived yet? She did? Really blew up, eh? I'm a genius. Poor kid. It broke her all up. Cried like a baby. Ran to her room and locked herself in. Well, we'll be right up. She can cry it out on my shoulder. Let's eat later. 
No. No, now. No, later. You're almost too much for a girl to handle. You better wipe off that lipstick. You look like you've been eating cranberries. Cranberries? They squeeze cranberries. <laughs> wipe off that lipstick. Miss Fontaine. Miss Fontaine? Yes. I can't call you Lily any longer. And I can't go any farther with this pretending. Pretending? I've just been acting. To try and make you fall for me. To get you off Mr. Albright's hands. I didn't mean any of those things I said to you. Because I love Margie. She's the most wonderful girl in the world. Good night. Just a second, Ray. Don't you understand? I'm crazy about Margie. Mad, mad about her. And I'm leaving. No, Freddie, no. I've got a little surprise for you. I'm not Lily at all. You're not Lily? No, Freddie, I'm Margie. You're Margie. Margie? Yes, and I'm so happy to know how you feel about me, that you didn't really mean those things you said when you thought I was Lily. And now I'm going to take off this wig and you can kiss me as Margie. No, Margie, no. Don't touch the wig. Leave it on forever. Don't ever take it off. Yeah. Resist me, woman, and I'll break every bone in your body. 